I'm on the couch and you can see he's there. So this is from our, our camera. So I'm trying to hide from him. I don't know where he is. It's five in the morning. No. Okay? Okay. I will call the police if you punch me again. The former politician Lisa Raitt has been in the biggest battle of her life since her husband, Bruce Wood, was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's six years ago. In a candid interview with W5 Sandy Ronaldo, the former Conservative MP shared an intimate look of what life is like caring for someone with the disease. For, for more, we're joined by CTV and W5, Sandy Ronaldo. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us Hi, tonight. Hi, Christina. And Great Sandy, to be here. Yeah, it is, it's so touching to watch this, but also uh, painful at times. You, you feel for Lisa, and, sh and she has been so transparent with this battle she's gone through over, over the last few years, but she spoke to you candidly. What else did you learn about her experience as her husband's disease progressed? Well, it was interesting uh, how she herself admits that she didn't recognize the signs of dementia. I guess when you're going through life, you, you don't think it's going to affect someone you love. She, they had met in 2009. Bruce wooed her. He absolutely adored her. He pursued her. Theirs was a very happy early relationship and continued to be so until there were signs that something was up. There was confusion. Bruce would forget things. There were times when she was in Ottawa doing her work as a senior minister in the Stephen Harper government, and he would get angry when she called. And she thought, she personalized it. She said, there clearly must be something wrong with me. I'm responsible for this relationship going downhill. Well, it turned out not to be Lisa at all. It was Bruce. And it wasn't until 2016, so about six years after they began going out, uh, seven years rather, that doctors officially diagnosed him as one of the 5% of Canadians who get early onset Alzheimer's. It usually affects people in their 50s and 60s, but it comes on with a vengeance. It's usually far more serious in terms of the hallucinations, the confusion, the anger that occurs in an individual and moves much faster than the more conventional type of Alzheimer's does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as she has shared this journey over the years, uh, sometimes, uh, as she shared, we see little glimpses of Bruce, but then we see mm -hmm. the disease uh, carry out. And, and as his primary caregiver, Sandy, I mean, what mm -hmm. help is available to her? Her husband, when, uh -huh. when he first suffered from this, it, it, well, was and is a young man. Well, you see, this is it. Uh, I have over the years of the past decade done investigations into long-term care in Canada. And certainly the COVID pandemic showed us how very inept uh, the most, and I shouldn't tarnish every single long-term care facility across the country, but most are incapable of fully looking after individuals because of poor staffing and poor training. Well, the same holds true for Alzheimer's. Lisa would often, her husband would end up going to hospital because his behavior became so aggressive. He would also go into long-term care, but they were ill-prepared to look after him, so he would eventually come home after a short period of treatment in those facilities. And what it shows us is how changes have to be made at a national level. And that's one of the things Lisa is doing now. She's certainly gone public with this in a very honest and candid way. But she also wants to push the agenda forward by calling on the federal government to take a look at a national strategy, fund it, and then engage the provinces so they can take a closer look and make sure that there are improvements in place when the large majority of baby boomers, that huge tsunami of baby boomers, has access to care. But I've moved a, a little beyond the point where Lisa finally got to the stage, and, and I know you have some videos mm -hmm. standing by, of when she could no longer take care of him. She was the primary caregiver. She was the one getting up at night when Bruce couldn't sleep. She was the one dealing with his aggressive behavior. It came to a head in December 2020 when sh her life was to some extent in real jeopardy. So can we mm -hmm. run yes, that Yes, we're going to play that clip now. Thanks, Sandy. Okay. So what happened that day that you finally had to call the police? What led up to the point where... He wanted to put me through a window. He, he was a football player in the past. I'm standing right about here. He put his shoulder down and he was getting ready to run and tackle me. And I would have went through the window. And that scared me. I yelled at him. 
And Billy came up over the stairs to threaten him. And I just said to everybody, relax, back off. And then I went, I literally standing here, I made the phone call to 911. Wow. And Sandy, I, I want to point out, yeah. and this is something uh, she has spoken to you about, Lisa, this, that's not Bruce. That, that was not the, the Bruce she married. This is the mm -hmm. disease. But this is, uh, I guess, what led him to getting the proper help and into a facility. What happened right after that moment? So the police came. They took him away in handcuffs. Now imagine that, right? Mm -hmm. This is someone you love in the throes of a disease they have no control over, and you can't look after him anymore. They took him away, and Lisa said, I can't, I need help, I need help. She eventually found a safe haven for him in Toronto's Baycrest Hospital, where they have a rather unique program. It starts out virtually, where doctors uh, take a look at the surroundings, and okay, I'm going to digress, because you're showing this video of Bruce actually at the facility, and <laughs> we see a very, very different Bruce, and mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to actually sit down and see this new Bruce, and this was essentially why Lisa wanted to speak to us, to show us how a good program can make all the difference in the world. It starts with, as I said, taking a look at the environment, helping the caregiver change their behavior in order to bring down any animosity or any aggression that may be in the individual that they're living with, their loved one. If that doesn't work, there is medication at play. But again, it's got, it has to be the right protocol. Well, Bruce has found a safe haven at Toronto's Baycrest Hospital mm -hmm. where, you know, this gentle giant, as Lisa calls him, is gentle again. Mm -hmm. And when we had a chance to sit down with him, they were loving together. It was wonderful to see. And Christina, at the end of the day, that's what this is. It is a love story. Lisa mm -hmm. has given up any hopes of a future in politics. She's not unhappy about it. She said life has turned her around to be the caregiver for this man that she deeply loves. She wants to make sure he's okay. She wants to make sure he's fine in the years that they have left together because let's face it, it's a sad truth. Alzheimer's is fatal and she will lose him at some point. Uh, this is a, such an admirable mm -hmm. uh, story. I mean, incredibly admirable mm -hmm. because uh, Lisa knew before marrying Bruce that he was essentially in the early stages of this illness and she's dedicated her life to him. Uh, Sandy, uh, but before we let you go, I believe I heard you say earlier when you met Bruce, even he flirted with you, I think you said half jokingly, <laughs> because you got to see this side of him. You know, we see these videos where he uh, really is almost about to become violent. That, that's not who Bruce is. No. Uh, you know, he charmed Lisa when they first started going out years ago. She said he was one of these larger-than-life characters who made her feel wonderful about who she was, mm -hmm. was, is as a person. And he also looked after her. And imagine this, a strong woman in politics who's have to, who has to, you know, hold her own uh, in the world of politics is always a challenge. And yet she loved the idea that someone wanted to take care of her. And, and that's the Bruce she loves. And... We saw a little bit of that. You know, I sat down next to him, and at one point in the interview, he kind of motions me to sit over, and Lisa says, uh, excuse me, are you flirting with Sandy? <laughs> We're married. And he laughed. I laughed. It just it made my heart feel so good that he was in a good place, and okay. she is also in a good place because of that. Uh, Sandy, I'm so happy you're telling this story, and thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. some of it with us tonight. CTV and W5, okay. Sandy Ronaldo. Thank you, Sandy. And Thanks, Chrissy.